I won't quit until mathophobia is gone. In high definition, this is KCAL 9 News at 2. All right, coming up, fighting mathophobia, an award-winning rocket scientist is going to be here with us to show us how to reprogram our brains to handle numbers. You're watching KCAL 9 News at 2. Oh, I know a lot of us have mathophobia. It's a fear of anything involving numbers. For college students, though, it can really hold them back in math and science courses. Author and rocket scientist Olympia LaPointe is here with some tips on how to reprogram your brain for mathematical success. Welcome, Olympia. Thank you, Sandra. How are you? Thank you. I'm good, but I think I've been diagnosed with this. I have mathophobia, and, and I think a lot of people in journalism do. Yes, well, a lot of people over the United States has that issue. Uh, most people are unaware that well, I was a award-winning rocket scientist, helped launch 28 uh, space shuttles into outer space successfully, and created a mathophobia.com educational program. But, but? but <laughs> people People are unaware that I failed algebra, geometry, and made a D in calculus because I struggled in mathematics and science because I had what I scientifically found as mathophobia. And what mathophobia is, is a severe fear that happens in the reptilian part of the brain. It's a back part of the brain that shuts off the frontal brain lobes. And the shut, when this shuts off, someone freezes up. They cannot do math science calculations for the life of them. And so they, be they become just paralyzed. In so what this they do. is a real syndrome. Yes, it's a real syndrome. It's a scientific discovery. I think that one of the things that's uh, sort of we don't like about math is that you have to you have to think through it. It's not something that you can simply memorize or use the creative part of your brain. It requires critical thinking. We, it's critical thinking is required. If we look at what's happening right now in the United States, the United States ranks 25th out of 27 industrialized countries when it comes to math education. There's a shortage of individuals going to science, technology, engineering, and math fields. And if you go to a basic cash register at a grocery store, when the, the cashier doesn't know how to count and give your change back, America has a problem. And so I decided to share and find a way to solve this problem, so that's why I wrote my book, Mathophobia. And in it, it has the three basic steps for someone to rid their brain of mathophobia completely so they can, in turn, succeed in math and science and will have the next generation to go in those fields. And it's a really interesting read. You bring it down to our level. Yeah. Uh, number one, you say name it. Name Call it. Call it what it is. Name it. There's different types of mathophobia. You have to know the type of mathophobia as well as where it comes from. On mathophobia.com, we have the free online assessment for you to figure out which mathophobia type you have. And the first type is Quincy the quitter. Quincy will quit before he even tries something difficult. There is next, Quin there is uh, Donna the overdoer. <laughs> I know, you laugh, it's, it is funny, but there, I was Donna in college. Donna is a person who, uh, studies and studies and still misses the mark and she mm. still fails. There's Samuel the struggler. Samuel is a brilliant Einstein, but he doesn't know how to communicate his thoughts to the next person, and so he becomes frustrated. And lastly, it's Crystal the criticizer. She'll point fingers at everyone for a poor performance because she doesn't know how to become a beginner again. So that's step number one. So after you identify who you are, yeah. then you can actually reprogram your brain, step number two? Exactly, exactly. Just like we have hard drives on our computer where we have a virus and we have to reboot the computer, take the virus out and actually reformat the computer so we can actually use it again, our brains are the exact same way. In the book Mathophobia, I explain the process to actually reboot your brain rebuild your brain. For example, if Quincy the Quitter is a person who has difficulty uh, tackling uh, projects, what he needs is the knowledge that there are individuals with him, helping him, coaching him to be able to tackle new things. And number three, build your brain. Exercise it. Build your brain. When we first identify our mathophobia, and second, we reprogram our brain, that's not enough. We actually have to create new neuron transmitters from one part of our brain to activate the frontal part of our brain lobe. And the frontal part is responsible for problem solving, to solve a problem into a solution. And so the key aspect about the third step is there's action steps you take to create new neuron transfers in the brain 
So when someone looks at the mathematics, no longer will the reptilian part of the brain be activated, but rather the frontal part of the brain will actually have a pathway towards it and it's created by action steps. For example, if Quincy quit the quitter has a coach and he studies mathematics every week at a certain time with an individual, that then creates pathways in his brain for his frontal brain lobes to actually work and solve problems. It's all explained in your book. Thank you so much, Olympia. Thank we you. appreciate it. All right, the book is called Mathophobia. For more information on how to get a copy and a link to Olympia's website, just go to kcal9.com, click Scene on TV. Olympia, thank you. Thank you.